Hi there, my name is Joe Butler. For my podcast presentation, I'm doing an urban field study of Cork City for junior cycle geography students. This field study is designed specifically with third year geography students in mind. Now, my rationale for the field study is that I want to give the students some real world applications of the concepts that they're studying in relation to settlement and urbanization, as is laid out in the syllabus. I also wanted to kick back on material that they will have previously covered in the syllabus, such as map reading skills, sketch map drawing, and identifying different types of rock formations. I wanted to encourage the students to notice areas of different land use for themselves and to plot them on their maps as we move through the city. Finally, I wanted to reinforce the key skills by having students practice at least one at every stop. Now, the learning objectives for the field work are as follows. By the end, students will have discovered the social and historical context behind the settlement of Cork City. They will have looked at the ideas of function and multifunctionality and how these relate to Cork. They will also have examined how the land use changes as we progress through the city. For the field trip, students will need to bring along a camera, some pens or a pencil, a notepad, good walking shoes and a raincoat. On the day, students will be provided with an ordnance survey map of Cork City and a medieval map of Cork, which we see here on the next slide. So we're going to begin with the social and historical factors that led to the development of the city. And where better to start than St. Finbar's Cathedral, which is our first stop. St. Finbar's Cathedral is built on the site of the very first settlement in the area. This was a monastic settlement in the 6th century, founded by the eponymous St. Finbar. Now Finbar built his monastery on the side of a hill overlooking marshland. This marshland is today the centre of Cork City. The first task students will be given is to correctly identify the underlying rock at the site, which is limestone. The second task they will be given is to read the contours on their Ordnance Survey map to ascertain whether the cathedral is elevated above the centre of the city. These tasks are designed to reinforce the key skill of managing information and thinking by having the students reflect on their own learning and apply it in a real world scenario. From St Finbar's, we will move on to the second stop of Cork Port by cutting down South Mall. I will ask students along the way to take note of two separate things. How many bridges that we cross or pass and three of the types of uses of the buildings that we pass, so the land use for the buildings that we're passing. They can jot these down or they can take pictures. At the port, the history of the Vikings in Cork will be outlined to the students. Arriving in Cork somewhere between 915 to 922, the Vikings were attracted by one of the world's largest natural harbours. At this point, I will ask the students to take out their medieval map of Cork to give them a visual sense of what the city might have looked like after the Vikings had settled here. The major task students will be given at this stop is to poll the local dock workers to see what the major imports and exports are currently in Cork City. For health and safety reasons, I will have approached the dock workers well in advance of the field trip to make sure it was okay. The task itself of polling the dock workers is designed to focus on the key skill of communicating by using language. Our third stop is a short jaunt from the docks, City Hall. Students will once again be asked to count bridges and name the land use for three separate buildings along the way. At City Hall, students will be given a resource which they will have to fill in by questioning the staff of the hall. They will have to ascertain what the original function of the hall was and what role it serves now, and get a small history of the hall itself. Students here will be working in pairs, so we will be focusing on the key skill of working with others by learning with others. Students will also be given a copy of the city crest and tasked with translating what the motto means. Before moving on to the next stop, students will be given a few questions to work on, on function and multifunctionality. These are, what does function mean in relation to an urban settlement? How is this reflected in the areas that we have visited? What did you notice along the way that might imply one of these functions in Cork City? How many of the seven functions that you have studied have you seen in Cork so far? 
These questions are designed to assess the student's prior learning and how well they can critically apply this prior learning in a real world scenario. The questions will also keep them busy as the next stop is quite a trek up to Shandon and the Butter Museum. Shandon and the Butter Museum is our fourth stop. Here students will take the tour and will learn of one of the historical functions of Cork City. They will also learn how the cityscape developed in the wake of the butter industry. Not only this, students will learn how the hinterland was affected by the trade of butter. Students will be tasked with writing a short history of the butter trade as they go along the tour. This task is designed with the key skill of managing information and thinking in mind. Our penultimate stop is North and South Main Street. Now again along the way students will be asked for building use, land use and how many bridges they pass. On North and South Main Street we won't stop so much as keep walking. Students will be tasked with taking pictures of the flagstones you see here in this slide. Now each flagstone relates to the lane that was once there and each flagstone name has a clue as to what was done in that lane. The task I will give the students here is to come up with their own answers for what each lane might have been used for using the flagstones. This task is designed with the key skill of being creative in mind. Students could also be tasked with finding out the correct answers as homework. The final stop on this tour will be St. Patrick Street, the main street in Cork. Students will be asked to find the plaque bearing the history of the street when it was filled in, etc. and with noting the land use of tree buildings here as well. At this stop, students will be asked to review their notes on how land use changed as we went through the city. How many bridges did we pass? These tasks are related to the key skills of managing myself by being re able to reflect on their own learning, students will own their own fieldwork. At this juncture, you can give the homework of a sketch map of the route that we have taken through the city. Students will probably be hungry at this stage, and Patrick Street offers plenty of opportunity for eateries for the students. Now this field trip is designed with some cross-curricular links in mind. Of course, you've got the history of Cork City, the students will be doing various mathematical calculations, and the students will see the central business district for themselves. So hopefully by the end of this field trip, students will have discovered the social and historical context behind the settlement of Cork City. They will have looked at the idea of function and multifunctionality and how these relate to Cork. And finally, they will have examined how land use changes as we progressed through the city. Thank you very much.